episode 71 of season 3 of Tower of God was such a blast. I absolutely loved reading through this chapter. If you missed the live stream and you want to catch up on that before watching this review, then you can click the card here. Again, it was just so much fun. I loved watching it live. It's like making history. It's like seeing history happen before your eyes, you know, seeing that chapter come live. It's so much fun. My favorite thing about this chapter was the focus on other characters aside from Bomb, because Bomb didn't even appear once in this episode. And don't get me wrong, I really, really like Bomb. One of my favorite characters, I think he's gotten such good development, especially over seasons two and three, he's become such a good character. But I do think that there's been a lack of screen time for some of these other characters. And this chapter, and last chapter, honestly, fulfilled that void a little bit, which I really like. The chapter starts with White versus Yoreo, and you know, Yoreo is a really interesting character, but we all knew what his fate was gonna be as soon as he walked onto the screen and challenged White. We all knew it was gonna happen. Um, it did happen a little bit faster than I thought it would. I kind of wish he lasted a bit longer during the fight, but it makes sense, you know, you're going up against White here, and it was a really sick fight regardless. I really do like the way they handled the whole Ari a sword thing. Yureo thought, I've got a bunch of hands, I can just catch all the slashes, but the Aria sword it basically is its own dimension. And Yureo was able to counter that for a bit, but then White basically upped his combo. He was like, well, I guess I'll just make more slashes. And the funny thing is, he's not even like swinging his sword more. He's just swinging it in a way that creates more, more like slashes that are coming at Yureo. And it's because the Aria swordsmanship, again, it's like its own dimension. It's its own world of, of fighting and combat. It has its own freaking like laws of physics and everything. So when you try to mess with that, it's like a whole different thing. Even just seeing that gore warning at the start of the chapter kind of got me excited because I was like, wow, we, we've never seen that a single time in Tower of God. Like SIU has gotten kind of bloody sometimes, but um, this time, you know, he showed a lot of blood and you got to see the bones even when he was cutting off your hands. So. Uh, that was a thing. But overall, it wasn't that bad, you know what I mean? It wasn't anything crazy. Uh, I wasn't sure what to expect. I was like, is SIU going into horror with that, you know, with that warning at the start? It wasn't anything crazy, but still, it was interesting to see SIU go down that route. So overall, it was a good fight. I'm glad we got to see White just kick another guy's butt. It was cool seeing White also, like, regard him as a worthy opponent. Or he said, like, you didn't do too bad, right? Um, it hurt my pride when you caught my sword. Like, you know, hearing those words from White also made me think, all right, you know what I mean? When it's We're talking about White here. So it's not exactly like doing even that much is an accomplishment. So good job, Ireo, I guess. And then we get this like little scene with Doan and Karaka of all people, the unexpected team up. I cannot say I expected this whatsoever. I'm wondering if they're gonna stay teamed up, but they end up taking out another one of uh, low freaking what's his name? Pobedal Liboric, uh, one of his lieutenants, like one of his new division commanders. And he got off screened, which is a little disappointing because his design looked really cool. He was just like big, all the big characters in Tower of God kind of get axed, you know what I mean? But still, really interesting to see the two of them in their conversation. Doan saying like, Slayers nowadays are different, you know? And I thought that comment was actually more interesting than it may seem because it means that Slayers back in the day were more like demonic and monstrous because she was saying Slayers nowadays seem more human, you know? Maybe a little bit more um, like her, you know? She can relate to them more and she couldn't imagine teaming up with the monstrous Slayers from back in the day, which is really interesting. I I'm glad we got to see that conversation, um, but that was it, just a small scene. She also called Karaka like kid, which I thought was hilarious. Doan, Doan's great. You know, what I, mean? I get why the community was a bit, you know, not sure what to think about her at first. I've always liked her. I think she's cool. But the majority of this episode is Hansung and Haracha. Once again, Haracha is the feline from Yasracha's army who has always had an interest in Hansung. He wanted to fight him, etc, etc. And we kind of learn a bit more about why Hiracha was so focused on fighting Hansung. He said, at first, it's because you were short and blonde, but then I started to like look you up and that smell you have, it's the smell of hypocrisy, which is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it started getting into this debate about Hansung's past because apparently Hansung, before he met Evankel, used to work to free the species of the tower that were sort of like, uh, subjugated, you know, and by, by Jihad and Yasracha, which is like interesting. Like, why would Jihad do that? I guess Yasracha wants playthings, but he's interested in like the 
the mixed races or something like it was a huge topic but apparently Han Song was going around like helping those species and it makes me wonder like why you know like what what led Han Song to do that I guess he just wanted to change the tower you know and I really respect that but it led to this whole you know debate because now he's saying well now you're fighting me you're more interested in going to the field and catching the mice than like rescuing the hostages and those hostages are the same people that you were trying to save before and though you're and so you're a hypocrite you know you're gonna sacrifice those people it was an interesting topic you know I guess he had some points, but not really. Hansung is doing all he can, you know. But they had a really sick fight. Really interesting stuff. We have to remember that Haracha is a high ranker. No one to mess around with. And so Hansung put up a fantastic fight. We got to see that he used the water, uh, which I totally knew was going to happen in some way because Hansung is a water genius, you know. He used the water to sort of push Haracha and him into the acid room, which is like, okay, you know. And Hansung ends up killing the mouse. He ends up killing the mouse by knocking it into the acid, which is really cool. And then Haracha freaking transforms. And we sort of knew that this might be possible because Haracha mentioned that yes, Racha had a complete transformation that he's never seen before. Something like that. There was a one-off comment about it at some point, but I didn't think that the other felines would also be capable of that sort of thing. Like that didn't really cross my mind, but Haracha did it. And he said, it's not transformation like the canines, they call it beastification, which is like, okay, you're trying to one-up the canines, I see. And unlike the canine transformation, beastification transforms your entire body, which of course Yama was able to do, but he's the only canine who could. The other canines could only transform part of their bodies, but the felines can do their whole body, which is another reason why they think they're dominant over the canines, of course, you know. But one downside, Hiracha said, is that it takes a while for them to go back to their original form, which doesn't seem like much of a downside, but we'll see, you know, how SIU wants to handle that. But dude, the beastification design for Haracha looks absolutely sick. He looks almost like he's coated in like electricity. I don't think it's electricity, but it looks like it. There's like lightning bolts all over him and he's all purple and glowing and his eyes are like flames kind of, sort of. I might be getting some of that wrong, but he looked so badass that I, I loved it. I loved the way SIU drew him and he looked actually intimidating, you know? He looked like a whole new character, and it was just so cool. And he ends up kind of beating up Han Sung. Han Sung can't block him, he even tries to put up a Shinsu barrier, and Hirachi goes right through it, and just, he's so fast, and Han Sung's falling into the acid, right? But then at the very end, Han Sung opens his eye and he looks like determined. Bro, that just chills, bro. Han Sung is gonna wreck this guy next chapter, or he's gonna at least put up a fight. I'm wondering because we know Han Sung is a water genius, and we know that he's, well, not water really, but a Shinsu water genius, right? But he's also an anima. So we have to remember that in season one, he was able to summon creatures like fish and and other, you know, well, mostly fish. I mean, divine sea fish is really what, what they're called, Shinwei, right? He's an anima. So we know that he can do that. And I'm wondering if he's going to do that because it's sort of like a trump card, maybe a secret move that he could do to gain the upper hand over Hiracha. I think that'd be pretty cool. But with that being said, there is a blog post for chapter 71. I'm not sure how many more SIU is going to do, but there is one for episode 71. So I'm here on Reddit. Huge thank you to Fallen Slayer, I believe that's the translator, it was posted by Fallen Slayer. So thank you, Fallen Slayer, for translating this. And let's get into it. So I have seen this picture. I saw it on Twitter at some point. It's adorable. We got a little Haracha, Han, and then Han Sung, of course. Han Sung in like the shirt and the shorts and the shoes, looking clean. Um, let's read this here. Let's see what SIU has to say. SIU says, because it's still weird not to write one. Fair enough. He's been writing them for years. Here's a short afterwards for season three, chapter 71. Han Sung may look really yellow, yellow, hee <laughs> hee, but he has this image of not taking anything anywhere despite his small size. So this is interesting because I never associated Han Song with being short before this chapter, but when Haracha called him short, I, I was like, what? And the chat was like, yeah, he's short, he's short, he's small. And I was like, oh, I, I never really thought about that, but I, I guess it makes sense. He's, av you know, I mean, the way I look at Han Song is he's not like tall, but I don't know, it's interesting. And even though we call him small, he's not that small. It's just everyone around him is big. There we go. Okay, SIU, thank you, thank you. That explains a lot. He may feel it's undeserved. As for social media, because Instagram puts out clean pictures and a lot of domestic readers use it, 
uh, but I can't figure out how to split the account between my personal and my public account, so I'm a bit lost. I will set it up so I can post pictures and comments simply in the near future. For now, I have been posting pictures and news on Twitter. I hope you guys enjoy this week's chapter. Have a happy week and see you next week. Thank you. This was a fantastic dude. Make more blog posts like this. He says that the blog posts are like wearing him down and take too much time. This was perfect. It doesn't have to be like three paragraphs. I love just the short and simple uh, way he handled that. So that's fantastic. Um, also, I forgot to mention it earlier with him talking about uh, posting comments and stuff. One of you guys went and, and talked about Bone Miku in one of the top, okay, well the top comment was mentioned me, which was kind of cool, but the freaking, there was Bone Miku in the comments, and if you don't know what Bone Miku is, you can join the Discord, link is down below, it's a freaking thing I have to do with 100,000 subscribers. Anyway, uh, so that caught me off guard during the stream, and you guys went and bombarded that, of course, so... Anyway, overall, thank you guys for watching. A lot of fun doing this review and just talking about this epic chapter of Tower of God. If you enjoyed, leave a like. Patrons, thank you so much for your constant support. We've been getting more of you lately. I know The Cheese was a recent patron, so thank you, The Cheese, for becoming one of the Patreon supporters. And overall, you guys are what allow me to make content, so thank you very much for your support. All right, and with that, I'll see you guys in my next Tower of God video. Take care.